regarding to the every model and how we can develop our model and utilize it in terms of uh, taking out some data from the model and doing some analysis. So make it simple, I just jump to the all uh, details that we are required for the AMI model is the kind of the structure of the AMI travel demand model. We need some kind of inputs that's going to be based on the traffic zone system and census data. Also, uh, that's kind of the population data that we have. So road network is mandatory one for the macroscopic modeling here uh, to have the whole road networks. There's a kind of the counting of traffic uh, volumes on roads, uh, as well as the visit visitors, if we have some visitors and transit system that we have, uh, any kind of different type of transit system that we might have the rail and bus and others in transit on demand as well. This is kind of the TTS as a travel tomorrow survey that here we utilize 2016 as an example, it's gonna be updated frequently every five years or six years based depends on the schedule and it gives us the travel behavior of uh, uh, all users but just in uh, kind of estimation based on the five percent of them then there is a trestle or track trips that is available in ontario gta and it's going to be ours uh, in different regions in canada or us and there's a calibration uh, step that is required to follow the driver license and the uh, statistic of auto uh, ownership and about the place of residence and work, place of residence and schools, that all of them we have data and we have to calibrate it and the precision of that, how much we require, for example, for the school one, uh, is based on what the uh, mm, uh, client asks. And then uh, the calibration can be modified and adjusted precisely based on that one. And then going to be an activity generation this is the most important part uh, for the activity based model um, and then more choice that we have to calibrate uh, within the ME model so it's going to be the calibration part for the base model that we do typically based on what is the base year of our model that we are looking for and we have enough data to calibrate the model based on that one then we go for the forecast of uh, here is it example 2031 41 and 51 is going to be longer than that one is going to be much precise so let's get back to the forecast that we might have is 2031 41 and 51 here as an example for different horizons that we define in based on the what kind of population forecast and employment and household forecast that we have for each of these horizons. So it, this is the timing that we define based on coordination with the planning team and ours to identify what's the best uh, for future capital projects uh, that we might have and uh, looking for the transportation master plan or others. And the variety of uh, peak hours uh, defined in the model is uh, already useful for identifying different uh, approach to the volumes and VC ratio that we might have. Then goes for weekend, that's kind of, that kind of be a separate uh, peak analysis that we might have in the model because this is the importance to have weekends for, uh, for regions that we might have tourists travel too much. Typically they are in the weekends. It's kind of the visitors that data that we uh, gathered so we can utilize it for the weekend and detecting the travel behavior of the weekends model. In TTS, for example, travel tomorrow survey, we might have some travel behaviors during the weekdays, but there's a lack of information in weekends. Typically, they is, it doesn't uh, um, affordable for uh, providing this kind of data uh, during the weekends because there are not too much travels and regions that we might have it. So. Uh, in that case, we need to uh, detect these kind of travel behaviors separately. There is the black zone models uh, that can support the occasion like um, pandemic that we had. So um, it's going to be covered through this month by changing the uh, work from home percentage that you might have. And other outcomes that we might have here uh, based on the AMI model, like the volume capacity ratio that is the most important one for realizing projects that we might have under road condition and congestion. 
uh, uh, analogous on rows that is most useful for the development applications that uh, we might have in each area. So we might refer to this analog growth state. There's the project prioritization based on the decision of the upper management that what are they looking for in the client side to prioritize uh, projects based on uh, different factors. This is gonna be congestion, safety, or facilities, or maybe much more than that one that might be involved in this project prioritization. There's a transit accessibility that's gonna be uh, impacted on the transit network and it's gonna be analyzed here as well as uh, active transportation requirement in my tab that, for example, if there's a short trips or if there is a zero car ownership, so it's better to provide more facility for the active transportation to provide kind of the equity in transportation for people uh, in the city and the kind of the equity and climate plans is kind of the results of the model that we might refer to that one by the data that we provide uh, we can reach from the model so it's going to be the sole emission accessibility of modes and others so make it small let me 